guys, NerdKing101 here, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, a collab video with both... Oh, yeah, hi, Mr. Ninja Star. <laughs> I would be on the video. And I'm Victor. That's all you're going to talk to me about because I am just Victor. I don't do anything. Yeah, you're on I Twitter. Anime. <laughs> you still have a Twitter, yeah. Yeah, I have a Twitter. Just Twitter. I don't have a Facebook and I don't have an Instagram. Please don't check. Yeah, so what we're going to be doing today is just because you two have just, if you want to fully explain the way you watch the series, like original versus Netflix or whatever, just finished watching Evangelion within the past month, I would say. Yeah. That's my yes, at the last month for sure. Yeah, and so Ninja, you have seen the original dub and the original sub. I have. Of both. Uh, not the original dub, but the, the original sub, yes. But I have seen like bits and pieces of the dub okay. and uh, bits and pieces of the Netflix one as well. Yeah. And Victor, you have only seen the Netflix dub. I've only seen the next Netflix sub, actually. Okay, stop. I am not in. I don't think I've ever seen a single scene from the dub. Okay, well, one of the things I do want to ask you is I just want to confirm. Um, do you feel that that changed the experience? Do you feel like you were anything was kept from you from the experience, or do you think you probably had the same experience as anybody else from watching the Netflix version? Uh, I, I guess I'll go for. First year, um, since I'm kind of newer at this, uh, I uh, the only backstory I have besides Ava before this last month was uh, I vaguely watched it like fan subbed way back like good like ten years ago. So I didn't remember nothing about it. This is my first serious watch of the show, and um, I'd say that the, the the subs were you know fairly accurate for what they were, but um n none of those little weird title cards in between uh, the, the scenes were really translated, so I don't know what was going on there. And I, I've seen on uh, on Twitter a few little line changes, like like being changed into other words that were missing the point, maybe. But uh, I'd say the, the Netflix experience was competent. It definitely gets the job done and not much else. I don't know how uh, Ninja Star would feel about that. I mean, uh, I think, like, the original definitely is the... Just from the bits and pieces I've seen from both, I think I'm still just getting... Even, even in the sub for both, I still think the original is the better experience just because of things like those title cards being translated. And also, Fly Me to the Moon was a big, like, controversy controversy that was going on. And, I mean, the reason it kind of just annoyed so many people is that it was one of the things that was so interesting about the original like it changed as each episode went along like there were like 26 versions of it and a lot of care was put into it and it kind of fit with the tone of each episode like a more upbeat episode maybe have a red background or just you know more upbeat instrumentals or maybe a more depressing episode would like just be the piano and it that, that kind of really enhanced the experience and kind of captured the tone of what you just watched and netflix one is just kind of samey like y you don't really get that i mean that's something a bit minor like you're not going to miss anything as far as plot goes but it's just it's one of those things that can make the original experience just so enticing for people you see that, what uh, i think it's really important great. to note about flying me to the moon this very important piece is that certain episodes i'm not sure which on the top of my head but certain episodes did include uh it being sung by different people some of which were the voice actresses in Japanese of Rei, Misato, and Asuka. Yes. Which, after an important episode for those characters, considering the song is literally about love and finding yourself at the end of the day, can be pretty important considering that's basically what Ava is about at the very end of the day, at the core. I, I can definitely say that I still have not heard any of Fly to the Moon, and that is uh, definitely terrible. Uh, because I need to get to that eventually. No, Fly Me to the Moon is great. Um, there's actually, if, you, if you're interested, there's apparently a Google Chrome extension that if you watch it on your computer, we'll add it, we'll play it at the end of the episode. Yes. <laughs> that is the thing that it can say. And, and it, like, <laughs> uses the actual, like, version that goes with she said. I'm not sure how they did that on a Chrome extension, but, uh, they did it. But now really what I wanted to ask you guys was as somebody who had like just finished the series and probably hasn't had a, probably had done, I'm assuming, some research, but hasn't done 
must it because you just finished it um what were like your overall thoughts on the show like obviously not fully because it's Ava but what were your overall thoughts when you like finished it like are you still like really confused about like things like the angels and things like that uh well Ava is a show of interpretations and uh I'd say more more or less that I've come around to the fact that Ava's story it's literally a way they carry the characters around. The story isn't really the main focus at any point. It, it's more or less a battle of the week, if you look at it from that as perspective. But on a deeper level, it's more of a character analysis of literally everyone. There is not a single, there is not a single normal person in that show. Uh, they all suffer from some kind of uh, drama, delirium. I think Evan Evangelion gets that very well it's very layered it's very real and um from that perspective i think that's where evangelion excels to a to match to a master class anime i i've pretty much made up all my mind made up my mind on most of the interpretations of the tv show end of ava is still having me question a few things that's for sure but i've pretty much come down to my conclusions about the show i don't know about how you guys would feel about that though i mean uh i think a lot of the uh a lot of the things up to interpretation have gotten like kind of a general consensus or thing able to capture i mean shoot like when i first watched end of ava for the first time i would like a lot of people were saying like they were depressed and stuff i was more confused i was like what did i just watch and then well yeah a lot know, of I, people walk out i've been like spoken to have walked they walk out of end of ava with this sense of like not like depression but then that like they don't get it like they're depressed because they don't get it they're like what I, yeah. So, yeah seriously and then you have to like kind of think about it some more maybe like look up and see other people's interpretation of it and, and it kind of helped me to formulate my own but even so like i kind of agree with victor in the sense that um ava to me as cool as like the plot and the lore like it's lore and mysteries were certainly a big part what kept it going were these characters what goes on in their head how they find themselves how no one is basically normal and i think that's why this might go into a bit of a different talk, which could also maybe tie into the next topic. Well, um, I think that's why I still prefer the TV anime, uh, TV anime's ending over the movie one, because I mean, even though they are kind of happening at the same time, you could call them the same ending. Like I definitely felt something more upon Shinji finally finding himself as confusing as like the context of that whole bit may be the whole main focus of these characters trying to find themselves, especially Shinji was kind of cheap there and i really really liked that the whole like my biggest love for ava was these characters and seeing these characters like just fully realize fully come to terms with who they are you know that was something that really struck me okay i love the last two episodes i know some people like absolutely hate them and i'll never really get why outside of like confusion but me neither yeah. first of all i do want to say that you have not you're you're one of the people in this call or watching it who have not seen the original dub of the alternate world scene, I implore you, it's on YouTube in full to go look at it. They were just, they had so much fun doing like an Americanized slice of life bit for that show. It is. <laughs> that sounds interesting. No, like, you know, there are a lot of you have probably heard of the iconic line from Rei Ayanami to Asuka, which is. Are you riding his baloney pony? <laughs> oh, I've heard that. Yeah, it's it's, it's an actual thing that they had Ray say in that episode. Okay, then. All right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's like, they thought it was funny. It was the 90s. They were throwing around the word babe a lot. They thought it would cover. But, no, what, what I'm what I am more so interested in is, is like, is like, when I first watched End of Ava and End of the TV story, like, I, my interpretation of the ending had really changed as I've discovered more information. Like, as I've discovered, as I've realized that Yui, if, that Yui said everybody could come back and whether or not I believe that. Do you think, do, do like, does the lore impact the way you view those scenes at all in that respect? Then you're like, you know, the way you interpret things like that in the very end. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I, I, I'd say one of the biggest uh, differences between the two uh, is they, they send similar messages, but to opposite extremes. I, I know that uh, Shinji is pretty much, uh, what's his name, Hideaki Anno. That's his representation of how he sees the viewer. And in the TV show, he ends in more, in a more hopeful tone, you know, where he finally learns to accept himself and accept that he doesn't have to please everyone else. He kind of learned a different, darker message what actually happened in the real world instead of what was happening in, uh, what was it called again? Uh, the word they uh, used. Human instrumentality. instrumentality. Instrumentality, yeah. Yo, man, that was a scene, all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and the reason it's confusing is because what happens in the in Endeneva is still technically instrumentality. That's still what it is. Yeah. The instrumentality is simply the merging of all human souls into a collective consciousness, which, which according to Yui, is you can, like, imagine yourself within your own heart and accept yourself and love yourself and truly have the desire to live, you can leave. Now, look, whether or not you believe Yui is up to the two of you, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't, yeah, I don't believe I don't a word know. Yui says. <laughs> I think one of the biggest scenes that was telling for me uh, in End of Ava was uh, Sh Shinji basically... Ray gives Shinji a choice. You know, you can either stay in instrumentality or you can s not save everyone, but give everyone the chance to save themselves from instrumentality. And, and Shin Shinji is, is like, um, more or less like, I want to free... At first, he accepts instrumentality, but as it goes on, he realizes pain is what helps people grow. And you can't really feel pain in instrumentality. You can't really feel, even though you're technically close, you're not close in instrumentality. It's the whole, uh, what was it called? The hedgehog phenomenon? The hedgehog dilemma. The hedgehog dilemma. That was the basic premise of that entire show. And so he gives it up just so that people can feel pain. And I'm not sure if that's a happy message to send or a depressing one. Well, I think the core thing but... is that everybody had the choice. Everyone has a choice, exactly. Everybody can choose, according to Yui, what's more, I don't know if I believe a word Yui said, because she's a sociopath. <laughs> I mean, you know, let's talk about that on me, and did you have a chance to speak? Did you have anything, like, on the whole Yui thing? I'm getting the vibe. Did you have, like, an opinion there? I mean, like, Yui, like, I, I don't know, because uh, I was just kind of indifferent about Yui, and then you mentioned, like, like, all the stuff, how, like, she's, I'm like, wait, really? And then, and then I started to think about it more. I'm like, yeah, she was kind of making a lot of the decisions in Unit 1, just kind of left, right, as... And it, going, just, just like to remind everybody, Unit 1, the Dirk moment, you is in control during all that. So like, when you when Unit 1 eats an angel, that's you. <laughs> yeah. You is eating it, that guy. Yeah, she is definitely... Probably the craziest character in that show. I swear, man, Unit One was scarier than any angel, <laughs> like in the show. Like, is it no. just be, yeah. like, especially that shot of him just like, ah, oh, man, like, like devouring it. Yep, and they like, just call, covered all in red. Yeah, and because something I think a lot of fans tend to like ignore because there is this thing. Uh, if you're as long as you're involved in Ava and Gilead, you fans them, you more you notice it, which is that fans seem to idolize Yui. Probably because Shinji, our uh, surrogate character, also idolized Yui. But when you look at, the, at like some of the more minor things that happen with Unit 1, such as during Asuka's battle with, with, with the Angel when her mind is being destroyed, Unit 1 refuses to activate. Even though it earlier was able to override the dummy plug. So it, it's capable of activating whenever it wants. She just doesn't care about it. This 14 year old girl having her mind violated. Absolutely. It's not a problem to you. Which is what, what I think makes it so interesting because that kind of. There's no good person in Ava. I feel like there's. 
<laughs> I'm just trying to think of like one. I'm like, there's probably like one of the side characters who isn't like too bad. Like, oh yeah, there was that one, uh, that one girl who's like Hikari. Who's it? Uh, yeah, I, I think it was her. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the side characters like aren't too bad, but a lot of the central ones are just like. But then Toji got in a giant death robot to pay the hospital bill. <laughs> oh man, that was. Yeah, he was he was a bit more on the good side, and that's kind of what made his uh, like near death thing just yeah a lot more sad because he was one of the better characters in the show. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, so. as you guys, as when you realize that you want the theory, which is the Mardock into the Mardock Institute and the school are all just a ton of BS. Yeah, to it's manipulate just, the, the UN. It's all just a bunch of fakes. Yeah. yeah. But, so, moving on from, like, just rambling, I think it just worked during it, it's like, even going on, at the end of Ava, I want to really talk about it as, like, a film, because many people, when they first watched it, I have, I have quite a bit there in a little bit, many people would refer to End of Evangelion in a serious way as a cinematic masterpiece, and not in the way you would talk about, like, a movie, like, some stupid movie, like, Infinity War or something, people genuinely believe it's like a cinematic masterpiece and for somebody who's like people have only seen it like once or twice or three times at most i'm just generally curious like do you guys agree with that statement like do you think it is a, on a cinematic level a masterpiece uh, absolutely it's um i i definitely feel like hideaki Ano was on some kind of uh, substance <laughs> while he was making that movie, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with some uh, of the imagery, like you're not wrong, man. Like the, the entire show yeah. has imagery. That I'm like, I don't know what, what the hell. I, I'd say that um, just cinematically, just talking about direction, imagery, everything like that. I, I'd say that movie is phenomenal to look at. You know, just if you just put the movie on mute and just take out all the dialogue. You're still going to find something beautiful in that movie. Mm. But it's mostly amplified by the story. Or I, I guess you could say like... Um, story? What story? The characters. <laughs> the characters, more or less. <laughs> the characters are, again, just like a roller coaster for the, the character. The story is, again, a roller coaster for the characters to ride on. The characters are basically what nailed that for me. Like Misato... Uh, pedophilia aside, <laughs> <laughs> which of course ties into her own really like her own method of coping with with that. Yes, yeah, she definitely has daddy issues. That's for sure. <laughs> Misato is probably always my favorite character in that movie. Oh, uh, Misato, yeah, Misato, yeah. You know, Misato yeah. is great. I also love, of course, why do I know this? But if you pause the movie when she died, you can actually see. The top and bottom half of their body getting blown away. <laughs> oh man! That's... Yep. And it's weird because uh, the Ava the ending to the TV series kind of like had a glimpse of Misato oh, <laughs> oh, and ending, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, wait, what? Did I miss something? Like, did I forget an episode? I'm like, no, they were just uh, showing Misato and uh, uh, Katsura. Or not, not Katsura. Uh, what was her face? The blonde one. Oh, uh, Rika. Rico yeah, Rico. I always forget her name. <laughs> but yeah, no, my, I... My fa- Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I, I really liked them, and when I saw them die in the series, I was like, wait, what? I watched the movie. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, my favorite imagery in that movie was, um, it was, it was like Ray trying to merge bodies with, uh, with, uh, what's his name again? Uh, Shinji. Baka sorry, Shinji. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Come on. And um, instead, he basically just pushes her away. Instead of merging into one, he held her hands. Like, it's something I love a lot because he's more or less saying, it's okay to be different, but we can still be together. And not literally, in a way. That's probably <laughs> my favorite scene in the movie. Um, and it's probably the scene that gets, probably gets the thematic message of Ava in the smallest amount of time. Just yeah. that one scene itself. Yeah, I mean, I personally, if I if I could cheat, I would just say the entire coma Thubatad, coma Thubatad sequence for third impact. Yes, it just, yes. That entire sequence is my favorite. Yep. It, it was it was weird because I watched Ava 
the end of Ava, like once didn't really get it and I rewatched it again back to back and that's where I started forming my conclusions. And after three or four times of watching the movie, literally within twenty four hours, <laughs> I thought to myself, Wow, Anno hates me, bro. He hates <laughs> all of us so much. Well do, do you two like anime? <laughs> Basically, yes. Okay, no, we <laughs> hate like you. anime. <laughs> If you like anime, he hates you. Anime was a mistake. I feel like Anno could have said that too. <laughs> Anno, but it happened to know Anno loves anime, which is the reason it's really ironic. Exactly. Oh, man. Yeah. I heard, like, he, like, does not like the Ava fan base or whatever. Well, I don't think he likes the Ava fan base. He, he's like, it, 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 like, why did you like that? <laughs> it's like, I don't understand. Like, is it, is it, is it, is it like, he masturbates to a coma to body, and you're like, this is not cinematic, man. I don't understand. I get to get it. Uh, yeah, he I wrote it. He, he wrote it like he would. He did not want people to like Ava. End of Ava is literally just auto response to fan and how dishappy were they were with the ending. That's all it is. He wouldn't. He had the story, but he was never going to tell it. <laughs> exactly. It was, um, I, I feel like Anna's gonna watch this video and it'd be the only dislike. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, it would be. Because we're all fans. <laughs> you just stock save a YouTube, you know? Just so, <laughs> that's the reason like why. You. I mean, I don't want to get too much trippy. I, know, I don't know if you had just seen the movies, though. But the movies, Anna's like, you know, I'm just gonna make it even darker. Like, I'm just gonna, I think Anna, he, he, he wants fans to turn around and say enough, and that's never going to happen, but he's so good at what he does. Exactly, mm. and I, I know very little about. I, I still have known nothing about the rebuild, so I, he's still working on it. I don't think he has a hatred for the property itself. You know, it's just a response that I think he generally has a it has a look of dismay upon. And well, it's also that's worth fair. noting that he said he had stated when he worked on Ava and asked the and most like legitimately like his wife is like. Don't work on Ava. I worry about you. Yeah, like it brings <laughs> out his depression when he works on Ava. Hey, if it makes the story better, you gotta do what you gotta do. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the drugs he was on during End of Ava, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's apparently like apparently he was like super depressed when he worked like the Black Rebuild, which came out in like 2014. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then I think, like, just... I think maybe that's why, uh, like, the TV ending still kind of stuck with me more, because that just generally had a more hopeful message. And I just kind of saw as Anno's message to the viewer in, like, a bit more of a positive sense um, of, like, you know, just kind of like, you know, keep going. You know, have to yeah. go with that. And then, and then the movie ending is also kind of talking to the viewer in that sense, but in a more negative way, because I really like the interpretation of the last scene where... Uh, the series criticizes the audience for being spineless and lost in a fantasy world. Asuka saying disgusted the Shinji is also kind of to the audience because the protagonist Shinji basically watches everybody die around him due to his refusal to make any effort whatsoever to engage with other people. And it kind of goes to show like how you've engaged yourself with this show, but and then he killed lost them. in a fantasy it's world. He killed everybody. Yeah, obviously a bit of an exaggeration, but still just like devoting yourself to this fantasy world and not seeing people around you and everything. Like I, like I, when I found out about the that interpretation, like I think my mind was kind of decided on uh, yeah. how I viewed the last scene. But you know, well, always subject to change. Like that's a, a beauty of Ava. It's like you know, it is it constantly changing. Don't. Like that was kind of how I originally interpreted it until I realized that Akka was probably talking about what Akka knows everything because their mind were linked. Yeah, she no, knows I about think Asuka how the, the gut thing was more like, I like, see. She says in instrumentality, "I know everything." She says she knows he fantasizes about her while he while he while he plays her, and now she's aware of it. She's like, "I know," because our souls are merged now. Yeah. No, I know it's just that more Asuka talking to Shinji, and because rejection. Is also her confirming that Shinji, they're out. And they're not in instrumentality. Because she would be unable to do that if they were. Exactly. Mm. 
which had also why he strangled her, because he wanted to confirm that they were not in the mentality. Yeah, I was always kind of confused about the strangling thing, like, at first, um, and now I'm, like, stuck on whatever, because it's like, well, strangles her, and I couldn't tell if that was, like, like, the time placement made me really, really confused, and I was like, oh, that's probably just a dream sequence, and then, but was it supposed to, like, take place within the instrumentality, like, in their minds, or no, was it I just think- a dream the suppose. general consensus is that what happened was was that Shinji of uh, course Shinji got out first. He was the first person to be to escape. Asuka we're not really sure why, but it seems at least as far as we are where Asuka was the second person. Asuka either does it, 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 it appears in some way that Shin, I guess Shinji helped her back to the base or she washed up, I'm not sure, but he appeared in the water. But the general consensus from what the Mathana seems to be that he strangled her because if she lets him do it, then he's still in that fantasy world. Because she's unable to reject him. But if he rejects him, that's like confirmation that he's not that, that it's real. Man, it was so weird. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then of course there's Ray, who just appeared for a second and then vanished. Yeah, that that call back to the first episode. Yeah, Ray in her like quantum form, with people are like that. That's obviously that's the same Ray in episode one and episode two visiting the two to get Ray can now. Ray's a god. Ray's like the only character I've ever seen. <laughs> no, Ray legitimately like she's in multiple p- places at once, and they're not like clones. She's just in the same place at once. She can be in two time spaces at once. Oh man, I agree. <laughs> Like, ever, everyone just kind of focuses on like how grounded like Shinji Asuka and Misato are, and then there's Ray, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> just on like a different scope. Well, uh, like, not everything. the Ray in the theory, because from my understanding, the way at least the, the way mo- the way it's supposed to work is that the Ray that we see throughout the show is Ray pre third impact. The Ray we see in the beginning in the town appear and disappear. That's the Ray from End of Evangelion. God Reyes. <laughs> no, you can, like, like, she can do that. She's like appearing before Shindy almost as if like to see him before when it all began. Okay then. <laughs> at least that's the common interpretation because Ray does that. Uh, you remember it was all the multiple rays when she when she was initiating third impact when she was grabbing everybody. Yeah. Gotcha. Unless you love somebody. <laughs> and then that one one does it. Oh, if only she could grab me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm neither gonna call you out on that, but you're right. Technically, like, a billion years old. <laughs> kind of. What even is Ray? <laughs> Ray is. I Everything. think. I actually, Ray is the one thing I'll never fully understand. I think she's a, she's, she had the DNA of Lilith and Yui Akari. Uh. <laughs> that is what I think. <laughs> she's so, like. But then again, the Adam and Lilith switcheroo has always really confused me. She's yeah, like, because, oh uh, man, like, uh, what's his face? Kaji's like, oh yeah, so this is Adam, but it's actually Lilith when he's like showing it to like Misato. And it's like, it's so, <laughs> bamboo's like, man. Yeah, and then it's like, well, the angel, we know the angels are the offspring of Adam and Lilith a created human. We know that. But my question is like, it's like I understand the origins and how they both end uh, that they both ended up on Earth, but I'm like, why and how? Like, is it, is it a comic fluke? Oh man! <laughs> or did somebody grow up? Uh, I don't uh, know. Christianity. No, you know, that, that was a message. <laughs> well, why do you think I value the characters more than anything else? That's why I kind of understand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then there, I, I kind of just want to end this out with uh, one question. Uh, then it's gonna be fun. I was going to talk about the Shinji Karu thing, but I, I don't really think that fits. So why don't we just talk about uh, go over who is each? Why don't we each go over who our favorite characters are, and then we'll end it there. Alright. Uh, favorite. Uh, I think I'll just go for, uh, for each male and female. Uh, favorite male would definitely be Shinji. Um, just because uh, he's me and he's a piece of shit just like me and <laughs> <laughs> good to know victory good to know <laughs> thanks to the hospitals uh okay i'm not that bad uh 
I, I like that he basically is he's the passenger character and like he's a representation of us and ba- that's basically in almost every rpg but he is distinct from us in several ways where i guess we we're, we're all we all want to be accepted we all want to fit in you know get our image put out there and loved by everyone that's his goal to the point of obsession with him he's not happy unless he's loved and it it pretty much i'm not like that personally i don't really care what people think about me but i've met people like that and it's it's real it's 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 hard to overcome that you you want to find that happiness you you want to be loved but sometimes you have to be okay with who you are first to be happy with whatever anyone else thinks of you and that's why shinji is my freaking favorite character asuka was a weird one um she's my favorite character but it took me a while to really love her in the beginning she was great loved her she was amazing loved her personality uh the whole german side of her was great i i love the little i used to speak german like back in high school so i kind of understand more or less what she's saying even though her accent kind of sucks in the sub, just, just saying. Um, <laughs> I would definitely grant it's a better German. Just saying. <laughs> um, so I loved the little, you know, um, when she was speaking German and everything like that. You're like, hey, you gotta think in German. She was, <laughs> she was my favorite character in the beginning, and the second Shinji started to surpass her, like when he was on his way, and then when he finally actually did it, she became. She became Shinji to an extent, where she needed to find that acceptance, that love, that attention that she craves or else she's unhappy, that pushed her. People talk about Shinji running away all the time, but then Asuka did the same thing at one point, where they had to literally drag her back because, well, first of all, she couldn't even you know pilot the machine anymore, but she couldn't function without the affection, the, the love of it. Which leads to the amazing elevator scene. I don't care what anyone says; it's great. The elevator scene. I love that. I love the elevator. I love that. I movie. love the silent scene, or like the scenes where it's just still images, like like the one where uh, the Ava is holding Kaoru, or like the elevator scene. Like I just love those so much. Go ahead, sorry. And yeah. at the end of the series, there's no real resolution for her. Kind of in the end of TV. End of Ava gave her a great resolution where I, I felt like, um, well, let's, I'm not going to talk about the, the last scene, but, but um, <laughs> her learning, her learning, you know, that she wanted her mother's acceptance for that entire show. Like at one point she cries in her sleep about her mother. And finally, when she has that affection, when she has that love, she's happy again. She's willing to fight again. She kicks some royal butt for a good two minutes and then gets eaten again. And <laughs> so she ended up being my favorite character overall. Um, not to bash on the other character. Ray was my favorite until end of Ava. <laughs> now, now I just, now I just don't get Ray. <laughs> now, I, now I don't understand enough to really talk about it. Oh, I which Ray, by the way. So <laughs> yeah, there's, like, there's, there's three Rays. There's three regular Rays. And then there's God Quantum Lilith Ray. I like Ray too. If, if I, if I, I like the, the main Ray. Ray. Yeah, the, the very first Ray. Okay, okay no, the very first. No, not the first. Not, not no, the one first that first you mean. By no, first, no, no, do no. you mean the one that uh, Akagi no, no, no. murders? No, no, no. no like no. seven? Uh, okay, like, damn. That's not the first one that appears, because that's the immortal one or whatever. The first one, uh, the one that's injured at the very beginning. So Ray that two. Ray is my favorite. Yeah, Ray 2. Um, so those would be my favorite characters. I love them each for what they bring to the series. I think they're... J- I think if you remove any one character from Ava, you just make the show substantially worse. That's how I feel about all the characters. I'm Pen Pen. T- it just like... Pen Pen's bad. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm talking... What place does Pen Pen have in this show? Pen Pen is the best character. I just didn't mention him because I thought that was obvious, you know? <laughs> I hate Pen Pen. Pen Pen is just like, why? <laughs> it, it completely breaks my emergency. <laughs> Uh, I, I love that weird penguin. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Indy Star. 
No, nah, man. All I'm saying is we should have seen Pen Pen's mind during the. No, nah, man. Who were your like favorite characters? <laughs> oh yeah, no, no. But uh, my favorite character, uh, I guess I'll do what Victor did, male and female. Uh, male Shinji. It's, I feel like Shinji is most people's favorite male character because he's you really either love or hate him. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you either love Shinji to death. If you if you get it, you like it. If you don't get oh, it, yeah. you hate him. Oh, and then I, I'm trying to figure out like what it would be for people who don't. I guess it, maybe it'd be like Kaji. I really like Kaji. Um, well, I don't really think you can really divide a into male and female because they're because they're unlike a lot of other uh, anime, especially shonen. There is not really there is no difference in the quality of the writing for either. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. It would be like but, saying, "Who is your favorite male character in Harry Potter?" It's like what? Why would you ever <laughs> like? My favorite character is like Ginny Weasley. It's like I, I understand. I don't understand why you're asking me that. Oh yeah, yeah. And they're but all like, so good. They're all equally well written. Yeah, but like no, uh, I would say Shinji just because like I think like the journey of him like finding himself and everything like that and kind of just isolating himself when things kind of go like each of the characters have like their own way with coping. And I think mine is probably, like, closest to Shinji's. I mean, Asuka's way of coping is just kind of through, like, her obnoxious pride. Um, like, the, just the facade that she puts on um, to make herself just seem, like, you know, through this thing that traumatized her as a child. She tried to be like, all right, I'm going to step up. Got to make sure no one worries about me. But then, you know, once her ego gets broken. You well, Asuka wants people to breaks. love her. Asuka wants people to love her, but she doesn't want to let anybody in. Shinji, yep. in the same, he kind of wants to be left alone. But at the same time, he's like, when he when he is alone, he kind of just ends up in a yeah, in, he's like, depressed. But he, but he also doesn't want constant attention. Octo like need be yeah, attention, but he, he kind of praise. Yep, yep. It's like it's it's this complex thing that's just like it's stuff like episode four where it, I was like Shinji was easily cements as my favorite character because. There's not that much dialogue because that's the episode where she just kind of goes off alone and she's just on the trains like, like silently. I personally love that episode because there isn't much dialogue, but it captures like that feeling of just so much in your head going on. But, I adore know, the kinda... scene in that episode. And I was talking about that quickly of uh, him in the movie theater yeah. when he did the movie theater and there's a couple making out and he just and you can tell like because that kind of what he wants is that love. Yeah, it's like, oh my, that episode was so, like, it didn't even need dialogue to yeah, just for me to so. know that feeling and that, like, position so well. But, yeah, like, I, I just, I love Shinji. <laughs> like, he's definitely one of my favorite uh, protagonists. But as far as, like, another character I really like, um, Asuka, I felt like I found her, like, her whole thing of just kind of putting on the facade with, like, all the pride and then her ego getting damaged as the series went along and i like how victor said it of like she kind of becomes shinji as soon as like you know you suppress her um just kind of isolating yourself or just kind of running away and having to be well, dragged they're the same character they have to, they, they, uh Akka copes outwardly while shinji copes inwardly the same so person. yeah yeah like those opposites type of thing and i also i also really liked uh misato i thought she was definitely one of the most characters in the show is also like at the beginning I was just like ah oh, she's gonna be a fun comedic relief character but you see there's like well a lot of... he's a well put together person yeah and then, and like, then I'm an adult I can't just run away like if I run away like she's an adult if she runs away for a week who gonna pay for the who gonna pay for the heat and then yeah she has to kind of let her um what's her face like just kind of let all that emotion out through means like like sex, and that's kind of why. I, that's all. I mean, I've always interpreted like her and Shinji like an end of Ava through like this. Like, that's all she's ever really known how to do and how to kind of let everything out and like. How does she love somebody? So, so love, like she's never truly been given love back. So she, she just kind of assumes it's like that. So when she gives it to Shinji, she assumes because like she's I always thought like, there was no ro- and uh, yeah, but like obviously she didn't know how to like properly and also considering Shinji kind of needed that motivation I didn't really see it as anything too romantic it was always kind of platonic to me but I don't know I think it was also at that point it was like maybe maybe if like give a, if I offer him sex I'll do it like yeah I've, I've tried I've tried the moral argument of that girl you've been the hot girl you've been living with are gonna die yeah and <laughs> like also- she does not give a crap 
Yeah, he like, kind of just like lost it at the beginning of End of Ava. Well, I, th- I think what broke him was he was like, "Oh, I'm a horrible person. I I, I committed sexual assault on a monster." Uh, he's uh, she, she kind of like does that to I mean, him. He is suicide in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, and she like I, her method like it doesn't really work for Shinji's well being, but it does I guess kind of motivate. Um, well, that kind of just freaked them out more. It freaked him out, but at least it made him keep going. <laughs> you know, because, because she viewed Madonna as a maternal figure. Yeah. Like, I'm not a, he's like, why is she kissing me? It's like really awkward. And like, I'm really uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, it was always clear she loved, uh, loved, uh, what do you call it? Kaji the most. So, like, I, I never saw as anything to her. Like, I was pretty, like, you know, it takes me a while to interpret a few things in End of Ava, but that was actually one of the things I kind of quickly picked up on. Yeah, I was I like, think oh, it's, it's right. very obvious. <laughs> That's one of the more straightforward parts of the of that very very bizarre movie. <laughs> yeah, and and then of course the the one of, I think the only confusing thing about that thing is that people seem to misunderstand that Shinji's not religious. He has to have to give a crap. The reason the cross is important is because it's Mikado cross, not that it's a cross. Yeah. Like yeah. like a lot of people seem to think well the cross is important because Christianity. I'm like no, it it could have been it could have been a anything. It would be because it would miss not us. That who she, it was something she gave to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, we've been going for forty minutes now. <laughs> well, and I'm going to answer anything else anybody wants to say about anything we had discussed or the series or anything. Before we uh, end up the video. I don't really have anything top of my head. What about you, Victor? Okay, so uh, yeah, um, make sure to check out Mr. Ninja Star on YouTube. His uh, YouTube will be linked in the, in the description box down below. Make sure to check out Victor Perez on Twitter. His Twitter will be linked in the description box down below. Warning: It is not. I do. I do not recommend looking at it at work. You never know. Wait. So I don't know. Guys, it's more hot takes. Have a great day. <laughs>